Kunnen we beginnen? Ja. Yeah. Oké, okay, I'm sitting here in the Stein building with director of Stein, Michel Weisswiss. Um, and the occasion of this interview is that there are open days at Stein where the touch exhibition will be presented. Michel, the touch exhibition or the Electro Squeak Club, um, what is it actually? Well, what's interesting is that it, it, the, it, the Stein Touch exhibition is an exhibition that is by now five years old and which uh, is for electronics uh, quite old and uh, it's almost an experiment to see if we could bring it back. It, uh, five years ago we were very um, actually almost bored with computers being computers and not being like huggable or touchable or squeezable or you could kick them out of the window that was the kind of idea we felt but we were also seeing that there would be possibilities in the years before we worked really on trying to open up computers or trying to make them touchable through sensors and um, the the touch exhibition came from that desire and wish to have a computer become uh, something that is like a thinking device that is you know has its place like with human beings in the brain but it's not like you know what is visible and what is in the outside is is touch and uh, we wanted especially in music um, music has so often been a very formalistic affair in the last century you know like in the, in the mid uh, uh, 20th century there, there was it's many people who wanted music only to come from numbers and actually now in the laptop generation there's a lot of musicians also that want music to become like composed by software like algorithmical or like the numbers count and we were actually thinking that music had something to do uh, not just romantically with the heartbeat but also like with the intelligence that is in the body like your fingers can like the way you can press with fingers is not just sensitive it's also very precise logarithmical scales and there, there is something in in the hands also by making an effort you you have to concentrate your mind and your body and i think music is a result from this joint action between your mind uh, and your body you know it's not just the mind that is rooted directly into a computer that will make the best music mm -hmm. and the people who have done that will notice that you can get very slow changing structures that you can't even control very well but uh, if you root you know your mind through your hands with music you can develop incredible uh, virtuosity and the interesting thing was that electronic music instruments were never designed uh, for you know being that touchable they were always like much more like programmable and uh, and so we started to make it like touchable instruments and a touch exhibition is really an exhibition of prototypes so it originally it was also made as an exhibition to really try out things with children because children are the best beta testers you know they they're the best test pilots for instruments Children are usually not interested how much memory is in a computer. They just want to try it and touch it and play with it. So they are very good testers. And actually, in the whole history of STEM, we have designed instruments with which we, we did um, uh, always in early phases um, try them out with children and have their opinions and see how they play. So the touch exhibition is not just um, made to... Um, to exhibit but it's also a test phase of our instrument design for the professional music scene these objects because uh, the uh, the touch exhibition has a number of objects can you describe a few so that people will get an idea of what they are actually like yeah well what is also interesting in electronic music instruments is that uh, quite often they were like keyboard based so basically you press a key and uh, one day I, I was thinking, you know, like a key basically is sort of a light switch. There is a bit of sensitivity in it, but, but it's gotten better. The early synthesizers weren't sensitive at all for speed or pressure. Now they are, but still, you know, it's like a switch somehow. It's like, and what would it be if you would like use a joystick, you know, something that you can control, which is much more like musical, especially in electronic music. You have, have this idea of gliding strata of sound, you know, 
and uh, it can be very rhythmical, but sometimes it can also be like much more like navigating through sound. So why not work with, with a game controller to, to play sound? Or why not use a joystick like you can see in the other rooms? But also a day, I was looking at a spider web and I was thinking that if each wire of a spider web would be connected to a different part of the sound, then you could touch the spider web and all these different things would start sounding and and it would be like much more a complex sound, you know, like sound, somebody's voice is not just a tone, it's, there's a whole, whole pattern in the sound, there's a whole piling up of sounds actually. So most of the electronic keyboard instruments are too simplistic to make really complex sound. So that's why we made, you know, like spider webs, like you see one there. Um, and um, so where you can pull wires and very, you know, like while grabbing them together, you can even have like very complex sensor based uh, changes in the sound. And I think it's very important to have more complex grip in sound, but in a very sensitive way. And it's interesting because you see children really, you know, like like play for hours with wire. This web actually has wires. If you pull a little bit, you get an animal sound. And if you pull a little bit further, there's a metamorphose into a, another animal sound, but that's an imitation by a human being. There is an old historical theory uh, that, that music comes from the imitation by humans of animal sounds. I don't think it's really a good theory, but it's... It was nice to use that in that instrument, like, okay, you pull a little bit and you get you get really like an animal sound, you pull more and it slowly changes to into a human being imitating it. And children are really trying to find the places in between what they like. Oh no, it's still a real animal. No, 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 it's getting to a human being, you know. It's, so these instruments are, are actually also like little mirrors of thinking, you know, it's mirrors of experimentation. And um, I like it when you can make very relatively simple objects with, with wires or you can use a relatively stupid game controller to make music with. Because about those game controllers, I wanted to ask you a question because Stein has two new bigger projects that are launched. One is called Ensemble, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But the game controllers is one thing that you've been concentrating on. Yeah, well, actually, we're, we've been concentrating on opening them taking off these little keys and, and, and like uh, uh, little joysticks and only taking the electronic board and then wiring your own sensors or put it in closing. Like the Ensemble project is based on, on using what's in here and together with software that we designed and then making your own instrument. And why is this important is that this is a totally cheap thing you can buy in a shop. So why should we de design new, new machinery for a lot of money? Well, actually you find in here little boards that can be used to make music. I, actually you can open an old washing machine, get the electronics out, and also use that as a little thinking part of, a, of an electronic music instrument. The reason we are into this is that it's a lot cheaper also. So we are going to give workshops, uh, and people are invited to come to these workshops, and they will learn how to open this up, and so basically it's an open it kit, so mm -hmm. open it kit, which is OIC, and so mm -hmm. this whole project is the OIC project. So the open it kit is like learning how to open this, take out all these things and use that print, solder your own sensors, put them in a music instrument you've built or put them in the clothes like the Ensemble project or, or connect them to a room and it's very cheap. So a lot more people will be able to work with this. So there's more chance that you find talented people that are not really in the mainstream development institutions, but that they're at home. And we have provided software that allows you to connect game controllers to a computer. But then, of course, they're usually made to play games, but this software allows you to route it through music software. So any kind of known software, you know, like Ableton Live or, or Cubase or, or like VST or audio unit uh, instruments, they can be played with game controllers by using this. But it's not just routing it. We allow also to really think, well, if you make this movement, you can make it a little bit smoother. So there's a whole data you know, a processing unit in the software that allows you to really tweak the sensitivity. And to really also, like, if you press this key and you do this, 
then this kind of signal will go to that part of the software. This gets a little bit technical, but basically it allows you to really route and scale movements to your own desire, and not just to connect it straight and, and like in a game, but indeed to tweak it so you can really develop a sensitive instrument and like become kind of a virtuoso. So you already mentioned the Ensemble project. It's a project by Christina Anderson. Yes. What is that about? Christina Anderson is somebody who has built up a lot of experience in a relatively new area, which is called wearable computing. And uh, that area is about how to use clothes with electronics in it as instruments. Of course, this is mainly a big military thing about you know the American army wanting soldiers to be dressed in uniforms that know where the bullet has hit so that once they come in the hospital they can be treated as quickly as possible or you know that, that certain communication devices are built in so it is used for military purposes also for space projects but uh, this is there's more interest now also by people to do like projects that send in um, um, so also now wearable computing is much more uh, in the hands of artists and they are designing you know clothes that start making music and so Christina Anderson who is a researcher and developer and an artist has made a project where she's researching uh, what children do in dress up parties so they dress up with clothes that are slightly too big and the technology used uh, to to sense their movements so the you should really show the, the demonstration then. And uh, it's done with the OIC instruments. It's very simple, like uh, game controllers that we took apart, and we made sensors like in a dress or in a hat, like a tilt sensor, and it's wireless, so you can play around. And so the children can dress up, and suddenly dressing up becomes music. And, and Christine is doing like workshops with children where she's really watching how children use it and how you can tweak the sounds and whether clothes have something different than a keyboard. So what is it if you're, you walk around and the music comes out of that, you know, instead of having the music and making you walk into the music, like in a space. Here you sort of carry the music with you. So that is one possible project. Also, like laptop musicians are very much confined to their keyboards. And for a while, a lot of the laptop musicians liked that. They wanted to be like controlling machines. They didn't want to be an instrumentalist like in a traditional sense. In a way they wanted to be more like composers and operators, but on stage. So they didn't want all the virtuos of stuff. But now after a number of years you see that a lot of them want the music to be more musical. So not just to come out of the machine and be shaped in a like a really rigid machine like way. Because that was a little trend, but after a while people have gotten that message. So. So a lot of them are going to experiment and they get into more musical, they develop into instrumentalists and uh, those people start to come to STEM and they want like quick and easy game control type solutions and so we open up game controllers and make little webs and instruments so, but also sometimes just with a joystick we show them how you can make in incredible music by linking up all these modules of your, your software uh, to that joystick, so you can make with simple movements very complex and, and beautifully multi-layered music. So basically what these new developments are that we are showing in the touch exhibition around here is that the newer developments are about empowering people to make their own instruments with relatively low cost but, but high technology. And um, high I mean like sensitive and fast and, uh, and good enough to make good music. Michel, thank you. Okay, it was a pleasure. <laughs> thank you for staying. <laughs>